He is Rude Boy, and he's kind enough to join us. Yeah, there he is. Randy Brown in the house. Uh, love that picture behind you over there. That is tremendous. You probably need to add that KO to the, uh, to the wall as well. That, to me, was your best finish in the UFC and, and maybe the best of your career. Would you agree just how brutal it was, how clean it was, how, how, how nice it was? Do you agree with that, Randy? Yeah, for sure. 100%, man. Thank you for having me back, Ari. I appreciate it. Of course. It's great to have you. So that's your favorite one? Absolutely. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. You know, I couldn't ask for any anything better than that. I mean, one and it's done. You know, that's it. Clean. So, like I said, I couldn't ask for anything better. Perfect yeah. performance. I've been waiting for a moment to kind of just show what I can truly do and, you know, honed in on it. And there, there it was. I, I saw you say that in the post-fight interview, like you've been waiting for this moment to show people who you truly are. Why do you think we sometimes don't see the real you in there? I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I, I bear away from the game plan. It happens, you know, stylistically styles make fights. You know what I mean? And um, it's been a, it's been something, you know, I'm very confident in my game, Ariel. And I always tell you that, you know, it's just a matter of time. And I feel like it's just a matter of time. And I'm very consistent. I don't stop. I work extremely hard in the gym every day, you know, and uh, my goal remains the same. I remain resolved from the beginning. You know what I mean? So I knew if I continued the path and just keep doing what I'm doing, it's only going to keep getting better. And I'm, we'll see a lot more wins like this coming from me for sure. Your, your, your boxing is so nice. You're, you're so long. So like you see that with the, the double jab, like you can just create so many fits for your opponents with just doing, I, I hate to call it basic stuff, but I mean like a, mm. a, a one, one, two is not like you're reinventing, but like, you see what happened there. And so do your coaches get mad at you when you stray from the game plan and don't, cause I would imagine they say, use your attributes. Absolutely. It, it, and it is basic. It is. It's basics at a masterful level. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and it's just something that we do over and over and over. And I remember there's actually a video that Dana posted uh, in the back, you know, when we're warming up, getting ready to come out. And you see me in that video, literally practicing that same exact simple one, one, two. And throughout the camp, my coaches, they wanted me to kind of move to the left away from his uh, spinning back kick, but and into his overhand right. So the goal was to keep that his right side occupied so he couldn't throw that overhand right and stay away from the um the spinning back kick and the spinning hook kick. Right. So um the whole camp was just doubling up on that two and drop doubling up on that one and dropping that two. And sometimes it would have been jab three two. It would have been jab jab two, but at the end of the day it was down the middle and we knew that was gonna put him away. And so you put him away like that, and then you show up at the post fight press conference with a black belt around your uh, yeah. your neck. Uh, why did yeah. you get the black belt in that moment? It's crazy. Everybody's asking that. Like, why would he get a black <laughs> belt? It's so I'll tell you what, the preparation and a lot of the game plan was in round two, I was gonna take him down. Okay. I trained so much jujitsu for this camp, man. I trained a lot of jujitsu and I trained um just, you know, kind of honing in on certain areas and certain aspects of my game on the ground. And a lot of people don't really get to know, get to see that from me a lot, because I, I like to strike, you know, so people don't really know that I'm a great strike, I'm a great grappler. You know what I mean? So um, I guess he's seen it throughout just the preparation. He's like, wow, like you see my my progression and he thought that I was ready. And I think I've been ready for a while, but for my coach, my sensei, it's more about, um, it's more about just, it's not only about my skill set, it's about my mentality, you know, and my ability to do jujitsu, you know, more than just in the cage or in the gym, it's more so about in life, you know what I mean? And, and how do I approach the game? How am I growing mentally? How am I honing in on certain things and using my, you know, my verbal jujitsu or life jujitsu, you know what I mean? So he maybe felt that in this time I was ready or I've been ready for a while. And he said, Hey, let me just do it now. How did it feel when you got it backstage? Like what, what, what were the emotions? What happened? Man, I tell you, it's, Ariel, I've been training so long. I've been doing jujitsu for like 14 years, you know, and it was, I don't know. It was a lot of emotions already. I was already excited. You know what I mean? So in that moment, I just couldn't help it. It just, the tears started coming, you know what I mean? It was just, just overwhelmed, man, overwhelmed and just excited and, and just proud that I stuck to it because this is something that there's a lot of ups and there's a lot of downs, Ariel, you know that. Yeah. And, you know, I just stayed the, Stay the course. And that's something I'm big on that. I'm big on staying the course. I'm big on not deterring and 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 not falling into because it's easy to fall into, you know, that uh, well, it's not working out. So let me just go through the motions and just kind of just let people tell you who you are and just kind of like, all right, maybe I am 
and you just kind of stay there. And then you look at some of the greats. So you look at some of the great guys that had their breakthrough moment later in their careers and stuff like that. Guys like uh, Dustin Poirier, the guys like uh, Alex Oliveras, who just stayed the course and they could have easily said, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to just go through the motions and just be a 50-50 guy. Whereas, you know, they didn't. They kind of stayed the course, kept grinding, you know, wholeheartedly still. They never just gave 50%. And look what it got them, you know what I mean? So I figured maybe that's the path for me. And I always admired that. So I just stayed, you know, I stayed diligent. And, and I think you're referring to Charles Olivera, right? No disrespect Charles, to Alex. Yes. But yes, yes he, my bad. Charles. Yeah, because he was a 50 50, uh, you know, 500 fighter um, for a good portion of his career. And then he turns into this champion and, and legend of the game. Were there moments where you were really seriously doubting yourself that you would ever, and, and I know you have so much more you want to accomplish. It's, it's not like you won the belt on Saturday, but it feels like you're yeah, on a roll for now. Sure. Uh, you've won six of seven, this great finish, a nice win last summer. But do you, do you, do you, do you can you know now that you're in this moment here, can you look back and say there were times where you were seriously doubting yourself? No, I, I'm I'm very confident, Ariel. You know, I mean, I'm very confident in my ability. It's just, but I I know I hear the streets, I hear yeah. the streets talking. You know what I mean? So I still know what's up. You know what I mean? I know what people think, and I'm still tapped in with, with you know with the fans and all that. So, um, yeah, it's it's not it's not hard. It's not easy to to just ignore it. You know, you're gonna hear it. So. You want to prove people wrong. You feel like you're getting a little more respect now? Um, I don't know. I don't really care. <laughs> okay. Well, I know you say you hear the streets. So what are the streets yeah, saying? I hear it, but, it, I, they, you know, it's kind of like, oh, well, you know, he's not as good. He's just not as good as he thinks he is or what? whatever. You know? After that? On Saturday? Oh, well, after that, I don't know. I didn't see. Okay. But I'm sure that, that waked a lot of people up. Hell yeah. And now you're calling out some some big names. So tell me what happened with Michael because you called him out, and then you well, it, it was respectful. You said you saw him in the back, but then I saw a tweet afterwards where you said the UFC said he's not interested. So can you tell me start to finish what happened here? No, yeah, that tweet was a tweet from before. So okay, to to, to really sum it all up, I mean, back in the day, I've been called. I called him out before, you know, and me and him had a conversation. You know, I saw him in Vegas. I was with Joey P. Piper, he's fighting this weekend. Shut him out. Um, yeah, and he told me, you know, he was down, he was down to fight. You know what I mean? I asked him about it, you know, respectfully. We just had a conversation, and at, at the time, it made more sense than when I called him out back in Brazil. And he he was like, Yeah, sure, let's do it. We'll, we'll make it happen. I'll talk to my people, we'll see if we can get them talking to the UFC. I'm like, All right, and I didn't do it in a way where I got to put him on the spot, so he has to say that, you know what I mean? It was, it was just me and him one away, and then uh. Nothing happened. Then I seen him again in in uh, Madison Square Garden. You know oh. what I mean? And me and him had the same conversation again, just us again. You know what I mean? And he was like, yeah, man, I'm sorry. We're definitely going to get it done, yada, 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 all that stuff. So I reach out to the UFC, and apparently the UFC is like, hey, you know, he's, that's not something he's interested in. And um, I was like, all right, I respect it. And I just kept it pushing, you know. Um, fast forward, you know, he, he's very, he was very critical about one of my fights. I think I fought Jared Gooden. And he's very critical. I had a great performance. I, yeah, I broke my toe, but he said that I can't. He just, he's very critical in the things that he was saying. And I felt it was because of me, you know, wanting to fight him. So that's why he was saying the things that he said. So uh, after that now, um, I decided, you know what, let me call him. Let me, let me try to fight him again. I mean, let me, I saw him again, right? No, I said, let me DM him. So I DM'd him. And when I DM'd him, you know, he told me that, uh, he didn't see the message. He immediately he went and he called out someone else, right? He called out Kobe Covington, right? Right after Kobe Covington's loss. And I'm like, all right, I guess he wants to fight up, which makes sense. But I'm like, bro, you, you know, you on a on a street on a losing streak, you should probably fight somebody that's um, you know, that's coming up. You know what I mean? And I thought, no, who better to fight than me? I thought that would be a good fight, you know. So um messaged him. He claimed he didn't see it. So I saw him in the hallway again and I was just like, bro what's up man what are we doing like what are we really doing like just tell me you're not interested yourself so i can just yeah. fuck off you know what I mean? like just because I'm, I'm not like bullying you or nothing i just want to pick on you i'm down to fight anybody but i think that we make for a good fight and i t- truly have a ton of respect for dude i think that the dude is a legend you know in his own right because he's been around for so long these are guys i was watching when i was an amateur when dudes were in like the ultimate fighter and stuff like that it was more so about having that on my my belt you know what i mean having that on my not saying hey i fought one of these guys that i looked up to coming up as a kid and um yeah he said this time he said again same thing that for sure we will get it done he promised he didn't see my message and um yeah we'll we'll for sure get it done this time so 
And that was we'll at the, that was at the apex. I was at the apex. Yeah. Okay, you believe it? No, <laughs> not yet. But uh, I have a gut feeling. Maybe we'll see. Now that you know, people are talking about it. We'll see. And and why him? Why him? I told you because, again, I just want the notch, the notch of like okay. one of the, it, it can be him, it could be Magni, it could be those guys that I looked up to when I was coming up. You yeah. know what I mean? From my class, where I was like, oh shit, these are the guys that at one point he was one fifty five and he had he was top five or something like that. You know what I mean? And these are the guys that I that I seen coming up, and I'm like, that would just be cool to get a notch in my belt. And honestly, it doesn't have to just be him. Anybody in the top fifteen, I don't care. You know what I mean? He just has a number, and he's that guy. So hey, double whammy. And and I've heard you say this, and I, I I don't I don't know if it necessarily applies to Michael, if only because I know he's been injured, and that's not his mm-hmm. fault per se. But do you think it is a big problem in in a lot of these weight classes, and in particular one seventy and one fifty five? Feels like those two divisions in particular, where guys really don't want to risk their spot, you know, their their ranking, and uh, you know, like look at look at DP, look at Dustin Poirier, he's fighting a dude who's eleven. That's very rare. Benoit Saint Denis is eleven, and he's three. That's so rare. And I feel like this happens a lot at one seventy in particular. Do you feel like this is a real issue, and and uh, is there any way to combat this? Absolutely, I think that I think that everyone wants to fight up. That's the problem. Mm. And I think that once you enter the top 15, I think you should be prepared to fight anyone with a number at any time. You know what I mean? So I don't have the answer. And I call it the welter weight, you know, the welter yeah. WAIT division, because it seems like everybody just wants to wait for the perfect moment. And when, you, when you're when you a welterweight, you know what I mean? And, and you're the, considered the, one of the best in the world. If you're truly the best in the world, you fight anybody, man. Anybody with a number next to their name, you show up and you fight them, you know? So... It is weird. It is an issue, and I don't have the answers, but guys need to just fight each other. Man, every day talk a big game online. They talk all this stuff, but when it's time to really show up and put their name on a piece of paper, they, they ain't doing it. I don't know why. Mm. Um, I know it was a quick fight for you, and I'm assuming unscathed, right? Like no injuries or anything like that. I know you mentioned three... Yeah. Or, or, or Did you get hurt? No, no. Oh, okay. I know you mentioned 300. Um, I think it might be full other than the main event. Um, but it sounds like you want to come back in like the next couple of months. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, can I give you, pro- I mean, the fighting has been great, but I really like this tiny desk thing that you're doing. Um, am I getting, <laughs> am I getting that right? Is that the name of the, uh, yeah. the video? this is great stuff. Who came up with this? Uh, thank you. And, and I really thank think you, you should man. do more of it. The visuals are hilarious. It's really, really good. <laughs> I appreciate it, bro. I appreciate it. It's, it's been my idea for a little bit. I know, love it. And, uh, we're showing yeah, some man, of it we, right now. It's it's a, it's amazing. <laughs> this is great. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. This next one, we got a pretty big guest that's coming on. It's going to be pretty nice. Um, I can't really say who it is yet, but um, if everything goes well, you know what I mean. It's going to be going to be pretty cool. But we just, I'm just on it, man. I like, I got told you, I'm into the, I'm into media. And yeah. I'm into like, uh, you know, all that stuff. So, yeah. Where do you film this? I filmed that in in the city in Manhattan, over at the Meta. Meta uh, headquarters. Ah, uh, it's brilliant. I love it. We're we're yeah. showing you and uh, Bisping here, just like you guys sitting in this time. It's just great stuff. It's I I really think you should continue doing it. It's unique. It's fun. It's different. Um, it's perfect. Really, I love it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, Ariel. We actually, I started putting them up on my YouTube channel as well. I mean, I got a premiere. If you haven't checked out my YouTube channel, you got to check it out. It's pretty cool. We got a premiere of one of my episodes from the Pro and the Bro today at five o'clock. Okay. Oh. We shall check yeah. it out. If we just put in uh, Pro and the Bro, pops uh, up. Just Rude Boy Studios or Randy Brown and my channel will come up. Look at you, a real uh, renaissance man, doing all kind of things. <laughs> I like it. And I saw, guys I, do, guys do. I saw you with my boy Action Bronson uh, recently. Yeah. Isn't he the man? Just, Top five coolest human beings on the planet, Action Bronson, in my hell opinion. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. New Yorker too. Big queen. Yes. You know, big queen. So we locked in immediately. You know, That's my guy right there. He's the freaking man. He shows up to the fights. I think we're we're showing this picture. I think this was at MSG. Uh, Yoani and yeah. Jacek photobombed you guys in the back over there. But uh, <laughs> this guy shows up for the first fight, the first prelim, and sticks to the end. Like he's not there just for the main card, main event. A real, real fight fan. True fight fan, man. And he 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 hit me up after this fight too. You know, just congratulating me and everything, and uh, showed me lots of love. You know, so um, yeah, he he really watches the fights. Like he's a fight fan. The guy knows everything about. All the guys, apparently, you know what I mean, who's uh, upcoming matches and all that stuff. So, shout out to him, man. Uh, I see Big Bob behind you over there. Are you going to see his movie? Absolutely. It you looks pretty good, huh? 
Yeah, yeah, it does look good. It, it looks pretty accurate. And my my boy Kyle Chin, um, he actually helped uh produce it. You know what I mean? Really? So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So shout out, shout out to Kyle. You know, um, yeah. So I'm definitely checking it out. And when you got guys like that, you know, who's immersed in the culture for real, I don't think they can get it wrong. They can't get it wrong. You know, especially such a big movie about Mark. Sure. Oh my God, it looks amazing. But I'm wondering, so if your boy was a part of the production, why didn't he get you like? An extra spot, like a little cameo, is like something. Right? <laughs> he didn't offer you anything. That, no, no, he didn't. <laughs> Unfortunately, what the hell? He did. that's messed up. Not even like in the back, just like standing around. Right? <laughs> that's iconic to be a part of the Bob Marley movie. I think the first one ever. I know there's been documentaries, yeah. but in terms of like a motion picture, um, I'm wondering how it's going to be received by, especially Jamaicans, like if they feel like they'll capture his essence and you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, and Jamaicans are very critical of that, oh, you gosh. know. So I'm just hoping they got the 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 accent right, you know what I mean? And they they did all that because the guy's supposed to the, the main actor is supposed to be from uh he's British, right? I oh, I don't so. know, is he? I think he is. I think he's British, you know. So um, but the culture, Jamaican culture, is massive in England. So you know, I hope I'm um, I'm sure I'm sure he'll probably do a great job. Next one at the apex. Or out of the apex. Nah. Okay, yeah. Nah, come That's on. Ariel, come on. I mean, come on. I mean, what are we talking about, bro? <laughs> the apex is like, it's becoming a nah, thorn man. in everyone's side. Yo, what happens when you I get the call? Say, Yo, you're at the apex. When you get the call from your manager, it's like, next one, apex. Like, what does does your heart just sink? A little bit. I was a little reluctant. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was a little reluctant. I'm like, all right, man. But I, I needed to fight. So I was just like, all right, let me just, you know, the fight got put off. I like big cars. I think I'm not an apex fighter. No. I'm a guy that needs to perform in front of big crowds. I'm an entertainer. You see the way I swag around out there, the way I move. And, you know, I want to entertain people. People need to see me fight. You know what I mean? Imagine that that finish from last weekend on in like somewhere in a big arena, T-Mobile arena or something like yeah, that. The course. place would have went crazy, you know? So, um, I don't know. I just love the crowd. I fight better with the crowd. The apex is killing me. It's killing you. It's killing your vibe. It's my life, bro. It's living my life. <laughs> oh, my gosh. For everyone. And more people are speaking up about it, and, and I'm happy. Listen, there's no problem with being a contender series fighter, Apex, tough Apex, but you reach a status. How many years have you been in the UFC? Eight years? Nine years? How long has it been? Yeah. My ninth year was that fight week. That's crazy. My ninth year. That's right. Yeah. That was my my anniversary of my uh yeah. of my UFC debut. Yeah, you know Apex Fighter. That's uh, unbelievable. Man. And and I know th this weekend is one year anniversary of, you know, your your last fight which didn't go your way. Since then, two mm. wins in a row, you're rolling now and uh big plans for 2024. So, uh much respect. Congrats on the win and uh keep it, you know, everything that you're doing outside, keep it up, man. It's great to see and uh very important as well. So, well done. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much, Ariel. Much Pleasure. love. Same to you, my man. Much love. There he is, Randy Brown, rude boy. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.